I want to uh, welcome those of you who come from outside the William T. Young Library to the William T. Young Library. And it's good to see uh, so many of my colleagues uh, here in the uh, audience. Uh, we've got a, uh, a good program this afternoon for you um, on a very important topic, open access. And uh, open access has been something that I've been trying to learn a lot about real quick because it's something that's uh, very important to our academic work, very important to our research libraries, and it's, uh, uh, we're in the middle of a, of a huge transition. One of the things that I've learned very well is that early on, my colleague Mary Beth Thompson would always say, remember, Terry, open access doesn't mean free. <laughs> <laughs> She's always afraid I would get that concept uh, mixed up. And so, uh, but it does mean opportunity, I think, you know, for uh, our students and for all of us as uh, scholars. And so uh, last year, <clears throat> I don't know if it was around this time or not, but last year we had a, a program where we celebrated uh, the creation of our institutional repository uh, UK knowledge and that was a wonderful event and it sort of was the uh, one of the uh, important steps we've taken here in UK libraries to move forward on open access and you know and I want to thank uh, Mary Beth Thompson who's the associate dean for collections digital scholarship and technical services for sort of uh, giving the initiative to that to get it uh, going in, the, in this well uh, in, a, in a really good way. And also our former colleague who's retired now, Pat Wilson, who I refer to as the founding director of, the, uh, of UK Knowledge. And of course, uh, Adrian Ho, uh, who is our current director of UK Knowledge. So a big thank you to them. Uh, if you've been out on campus this week, you've noticed that there have been several events across the campus. I ran into Robert Shapiro hawking pens and pencils over by the Whitehall classroom building and uh, trying to spread the word about open access. And that's really what it's all about, is to uh, get this message out where people can, can hear about it. And the, the group that organized those events and helped organize uh, today's activities are uh, Jim Bartlett, Lindsay Calico, uh, Adrian Ho, Robert Shapiro, Franklin Rungi, and Mary Beth Thompson. So I want to thank all of you for your hard work. We've got a, a great panel today, and I want to uh, uh, welcome Dr. Solomon to Kentucky, and we're so glad to, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, and of course, my colleagues from the university as well. I don't want to you know, ignore you. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's great having all of you all here, and it's now my pleasure to introduce Jen Bartlett, Head of Reference Services here at William T. Young Library. Thank you very much, Terry, and welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the Planning Committee and UK Libraries, we're very happy uh, to, to have you here to talk about this important topic. Um, it is my privilege to introduce our panelists and our keynote speaker today, but uh, just to talk about how the uh, afternoon will, will proceed. After our keynote speech, we will have responses from our panelists. And after that, we will have opportunity for, for Q&A. And after the Q&A, we will have a reception next door in the alumni gallery, um, at which point we can continue our, our discussions, hopefully. Our first panelist today is Brian L. Fry. He is an assistant professor at the University of Kentucky College of Law. He served as a visiting assistant professor of law at Hofstra University School of Law and was a litigation associate at Sullivan and Cromwell LLP. He also clerked for Judge Andrew J. Kleinfeld of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit and Justice Richard B. Sanders of the Washington Supreme Court. He received his JD from the New York University School of Law in 2005, an MFA from the San Francisco Art Institute in 1997, and a BA from the University of California at Berkeley. Professor Fry is also a filmmaker and a journalist. He is currently collaborating on a feature-length documentary called R. Nixon, which is based on the Super 8 home movies of H.R. Haldeman, John Ehrlichman, and Dwight Chapin. 
Professor Fry's research focuses on legal issues affecting artists and arts organizations. He teaches civil procedure, copyright, intellectual property, nonprofit organizations, and art law. Our second panelist is Neil Hutchins. Neil Hutchins is an assistant professor in the University of Kentucky School of Education, joining the Department of Educational Policy Studies and Evaluation in fall of 2009. Dr. Hutchins earned a PhD in education policy with a specialization in higher education from the University of Maryland in 2007. While in graduate school, he served as a legislative fellow on the US Senate's Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. He earned his JD from the University of Alabama School of Law in 2002, where he graduated summa cum laude and was a member of the Alabama Law Review. Dr. Hutchins' scholarship centers on law and policy matters in higher education, with much of his research focused on institutional autonomy concerns and issues dealing with speech and expression, including in relation to academic freedom. He is also a faculty editor of the Kentucky Journal of Higher Education Policy and Practice, which is one of the open access journals hosted on UK Knowledge, UK Library's institutional repository. Our third panelist is Stephen Wren. Stephen Wren is currently the director of the University Press of Kentucky and also serves as a liaison for the Thomas D. Clark Foundation, an organization supporting the publication of books about Kentucky and the Appalachian region. Mr. Wren has also served as academic publisher at Brassies Inc. in Dulles, Virginia, vice president of editorial and executive editor for history and political theory at Roman and Littlefield Publishers in Lanham, Maryland, and editorial director for Lexington Books. Uh, books that Mr. Wren has published during his career have won awards, including the Washington Post Notable Book of the Year in History, the Herbert Hoover Library Prize for the Best Book in American History, and the Philadelphia Inquirer Book of the Year in Cultural Studies. Mr. Wren himself is also the author of a book, Civil Rights in the Whitest State, Vermont's Perceptions of Civil Rights, 1945 to 1968, and he has also written about the book publishing industry for the Washington Post. At this point, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker for this afternoon, Dr. David Solomon. Dr. Solomon is a professor of medicine at Michigan State University. He is also a founding editor of Medical Education Online, an open access, peer-reviewed electronic journal that has been covering all aspects of health professions education since 1996. He served as the journal's editor from 1996 to 2011. In addition, he is a founding board member of the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association, whose mission is to represent the interests of open access journal and book publishers globally in all scientific, technical, and scholarly disciplines. Dr. Solomon is also the author of the 2008 book, Developing Open Access Journals, A Practical Guide, and he has conducted numerous workshops on creating open access journals. He has the PhD in educational psychology and specializes in performance assessment, program evaluation, curriculum development, and distance learning. His current research focuses on the growth of open access publishing and issues concerning APC, or article processing charge funded open access publications. 